forsaken, gather us in the blind and the lame. All right, let's do this. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to another edition of Super Farmer Cigar. Still in the garage. <laughs> garage talks. Um, I almost snuck out to the deck <clears throat> um, just to maybe freeze, get a couple extra blankets wrapped up. Um, would not have made for a very interesting video. I'm hoping here soon we can get back out on that deck. So anyway, what are we smoking? What are we drinking? Still doing the Oscar Valdez. This is the Rosalita. Um, very robusto. Um, very strong cigar. Again, I'm getting more into these Maduros and Robustos and Sumatras and whatnot. Um, a very strong cigar, strong, strong flavor. So far, not my favorite out of the whole bot bunch. <clears throat> Cleansing the palate, of course, we have our good old friend, Water. That's right, folks, we're still in the Lenten season. Um, and when this video comes out, actually, it'll come out on Holy Week. Um, so happy uh, Holy Week to everyone. Uh, the final home stretch of Lent is upon us. Um, we're going to come up upon the Good Friday and Holy Thursday and um, find the Easter Sunday, get through the Easter Vigil on Saturday. Good times, lots of prayers, lots of fasting and sacrificing, and me, just like every other uh, <clears throat> Catholic out there, uses Holy Week to kind of catch up on all the uh, all the sacrifices and all the uh, stuff we might have skimped on. Uh, we try to make that last week just a real stand-up good week for. Everything we're doing, our penance, our sacrifices, our asceticisms, all of that. So tonight, oh, and by the way, I hope everyone enjoyed last week's video. Um, like I said in the video, I had, uh, I think, two drinks uh, even before I started to record. Um, the video was about... Um, how during Lent and even during the year, there are certain times when we kind of relax our Lenten traditions, usually called solemnities. Uh, well, that uh, day, that Monday, was actually the solemnity of St. Joseph. Uh, we had a bit of a celebration. Um, I had, I think, two drinks. Um, I believe uh, one rum and coke, maybe it was two rum and cokes. So it was a rum and coke and a hard cider. Um, before I started shooting, and then I had a beer, of course, during the video. Uh, if you might have noticed, I could not say the word solemnity in the first part of the video. I was slurring my speech, getting a little deep, a little goofy, a little heavy, because um, those two drinks hit hard. Um, I had, hadn't had much alcohol during Lent, um, so that one, they hit, they hit hard, they hit quick. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's kind of a funnier funnier video. I wouldn't say a lighthearted video, but you can kind of get a chuckle at me. Clearly have had uh, one or two drinks before I started the video. Uh, today, just water. But tonight's video, uh, I'm going to make it about forgiveness and reconciliation. Um, I was actually kind of shocked to find out that not all religions believe in reconciliation, that you can confess your sins and have them forgiven while you're on earth. Um, this came, of course, I've talked about this time in my life many, many times. Um, when I worked in Maryland, I took kids out camping. And one of the, the greatest things that ever happened in my life happened while I was there. Or I should say one of the most impactful things. There was a group of individuals. We were all from different faiths, different backgrounds, different belief systems. Well, at night, we would sit around a campfire and just start talking. Um, I learned a lot about the Seventh-day Adventist uh, religion. I learned a lot about Judaism. 
and uh, really kind of deep in myself, uh, uh, Baptists. We had a Baptist individual there. We even had one person who dabbled in Buddhism. Um, she did a lot of alternative and new age stuff, but she considered herself a bit of a Buddhist. The information I learned, and of course we had people who came in and out during these camps, different helpers, and it was always encouraged, sit down, let's talk. Um, I was genuinely shocked when talking to the gentleman who was about Seventh-day Adventist that you know, they don't have reconciliation. They don't have forgiveness. The sins you have are the sins you have. Um, and then when it's time for judgment, kind of you just hope that uh, the good you've done outweighs any sins you might have committed. Of course, as a Catholic, this was a very foreign thought for me. Uh, we are encouraged to at least a minimum of once a year go to reconciliation, go to confession, have our sins forgiven. That's actually in this Easter period. Um, and then during, uh, it's usually highly recommended to do it during Lent, or excuse me, during Advent. Uh, sorry about that. Got a runny nose going here. Um, yeah, just for the, ad, the Advent, the Christmas season. And then, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of people go monthly, a lot of people go weekly. Um, priests actually go multiple times a week. Some of them go daily to confession, which I found very interesting. It was explained to me as like taking a shower. Um, you know, you, you go one day without a shower, eh, okay, you're not too bad. You go two days without a shower, eh, okay, you're starting to maybe stink a little bit. You got to flip your shirt inside out, put on some deodorant. Um, but the longer you wait to the shower, the more, you know, dirt you have. And really, everyone should take a shower daily. And that's how the priest explained. He's like, you know, you should go to confession as much as you can because it's like taking a shower. And that resonated with me. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say I go to confession, you know, on a uh, weekly or monthly even basis. Um, I definitely can attest that I go longer than I should between my confessions, something I'm working on as I get older here. Um, I make every excuse in the book, of course, of why I don't go more often, but again, it's something I'm working towards. I always think about confession and forgiveness during the Eastern, Easter season. One, it is the one time of year we are required to go to confession um, as Catholics. But there are a lot of really good stories from the Bible, a lot of Bible passages that talk about forgiveness during this time of year. I mean, Jesus died on the cross for our sins so that we could have reconciliation, we could have forgiveness, we can get to heaven. But the two passages that really resonates with me, one is, um, again, after Jesus is crucified, he raises again, meets with his disciples and breathes upon them the Holy Spirit, telling them that you know anything they uh, bind in heaven or anything that they loose on earth will be loosed in heaven anything they bind on earth will be bound in heaven um, and that's really considered like the one of the many scripture passages for reconciliation in the Catholic Church why we believe that lay people can forgive sins and why you can't really just go off into the woods and pray away your sins as a Catholic thinks. Again, some religions do believe in that, and um, it's not right to me, but I, I again, I've talked to a lot of people, and I understand where you're coming from. Um, again, for me and my belief system and not my understanding, I don't think that's correct, but it is what it is. And that's an interesting Bible passage, that apostolic, was apostolic tradition, apostolic lineage, Papal lineage, I forget the, the term basically where you know you can trace every priest back to, to the 12 disciples and St. Peter and um, that moment when they had the Holy Spirit breathe upon them. And that story is great. Again, that's one of the found, found, foundational um, Bible passages when talking about that apostolic secession and the ability for a priest to Hear confession, have reconciliation, forgive your sins here on earth. But there's one more Bible passage, again, read during the Easter season. 
that really resounds with me um, and helps me strengthen as a Catholic. It is as Jesus is hanging on the cross and uh, talks about the two thieves next to him. Um, one of them is kind of poking fun at Jesus, where the other thief says, you know, you know, stop, wait. You know, we were both judged fairly for our crimes. We should be crucified to death. We're thieves. We're bad people. But here hanging next to us is a man who is sinless, um, who doesn't know sin, can't sin, and he's being condemned for something he didn't do. And he asks for Jesus' forgiveness. He says, you know, forgive me. You know, I, 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 I learn, yearn for nothing more but to enter the gates of heaven. And Jesus tells him, you know, you are going to join me in heaven. Um, there's a part of me that, I'm, again, I'm not a theologist. Hold on. <coughs> oh, excuse me. There's a part of me that firmly believes that was the first person allowed into heaven. It was that thief who had the first confession to Jesus. Confessed his sins just before he died. Said, now, you know, I'm not worthy excuse me wow you know i'm not worthy but remember me and he said he would he forgave his sins it's very powerful clearly a man who's done a lot of bad things that he can admit when he's on death row that he was judged fairly he deserved to be crucified. He deserved the death penalty. But he truly was sad and, and wanted to be forgiven. He wanted to do better. He wanted his sins forgiven. He wanted to be reconciled. He wanted reconciliation. And because of that, he was given it. And again, it's probably not true in a theological sense, but I believe he was the first person to actually go into heaven after Jesus. That he was the one who Jesus forgave his sins and he got brought into heaven. Um, he didn't ask Jesus to heal his wounds or to have him, you know, to help him off the cross. He wanted forgiveness. That's powerful. The true miracle right there, I know a lot of religions and a lot of people look towards like miraculous healings and signs, but probably the biggest one is Jesus forgiving someone's sins. And all that person had to do was ask for forgiveness. Powerful, amazing. So anyway, yeah. Um, I definitely have to go make my uh, reconciliation here during Easter. Uh, when I record this video, I actually have two weeks before Easter. Again, this will come out during Holy Week. So happy Holy Week, everyone. I hope everyone out there who is Catholic is uh, going in in this last week to uh, have their sins heard, to go in for penance and reconciliation. For those of you who are not Catholic, I hope you convert in this week. <laughs> um and just in general, I mean, know that your sins can be forgiven in my point of view, in my beliefs. And there's power in that. That's the true miracle right there. These other things that people test are miracles are, they're nice. But that is a true miracle, having your sins forgiven. Anyway, folks, I'll let you kind of ponder on that one. I'm going to enjoy my very dark cigar here. Hope you stay safe out there. We'll see you on the next one.